everyone. Who wants to change the world? Anyone? Does that sound like a good idea? OK, well, I really want to have fun. I want to, I want to make this an engaging 50 minutes that we have together. If anything comes up along the way, you have any questions, please feel free. Just raise your hand, and, and we'll talk about it. And every go, it's OK. We can just go with it. Can you just get the menu off the, for me? Thank you. So everyone thinks of changing the world but no one thinks of changing himself. And so Tolstoy said that. And really the good news is that you can all be a part of changing the world, but it must start with changing yourself. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And this is one thing that I picked up on that I so am 100% on board with. To be inspired is great, but to inspire is incredible and to me it's awesome and I'd like to just share with you I remember the first moment uh, that I had that thought and it was in the mid 80s it was about 1985 and I was house sitting for the producer of the Golden Girls I was working at that production company at the time and it was about two o'clock in the morning and there I am in bed watching who else Tony Robbins personal power had just come out and I'm watching this half hour infomercial and I thought to myself, this guy is such a genius because it doesn't matter what your problem is, he has the answer. And so I thought, I would love to be able to do that. And what's interesting to me is that in the 20 or 30 years since then, I've really learned that every presenter is totally unique and different. And we all resonate with different people differently. So for instance, I found out that Tony Robbins' mentor was Jim Rohn. And I'm gonna give you some, some Jim Rohn quotes in, in just a little bit, but to me, Jim Rohn, who's 180 degrees from Tony Robbins, he was an older gentleman, very calm, collective, very smooth, simple delivery. I just resonated with that message a lot more than the big explosive, you know, show-stopping routine that sometimes Tony will do. I think that Tony has value also, but that's just who I resonated with. So the first thing I'd like you to do is just imagine and just think to yourself, what do you want? What do you really want out of life? Because we are here for such a ridiculously small amount of time. And as I've learned, time really is our most precious asset. Because you can make more money, and chances are if you lose money, which I lost a fortune actually, chances are you can gain that money back. But once you spend a moment, that's it. It's gone forever. You cannot get it back. And that's why, first of all, I just want to thank you so much for being in this room at this moment. I so appreciate your time. I value your time. And I really, truly appreciate the fact that you've chosen to spend these moments here discussing a topic as important as this. So can one person make a difference in the world who thinks they can? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, there are so many examples that we would never ever have time to even scratch the surface. But I just took a few of the people who I think have helped change the world, along with one of their quotes, because I love quotes. Abraham Lincoln on happiness. Most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. That's one of his most famous quotes. And what to me is so interesting about that is, you know, Abraham Lincoln was a very depressed guy. He had, he went through so much before he eventually became president. But, you know, that quote is directly from him. Gandhi, love this on persistence. First, they ignore you. Then, they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. <laughs> it's all about persistence. And as much as you would love to give up, can't do it. Cannot be an option. Because that's the only way you can lose, is if you give up. Einstein on success, try not to become a man of success, but rather to become a man of value. And by the way, when Einstein saw this picture of himself, he immediately returned to the studio the next day with another quote. <laughs> if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. And I really believe that's true. And I think that's one of the reasons that I love Jim Rohn so well and so much is because he simplified life's complex issues and problems. Disney, Walt Disney on fun. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. 
And a lot of times, what feels or seems like it may be impossible at one point in your life, if you take out that sheet of paper or open up your computer and you put that goal at the top of the page and you start brainstorming just even on your own, um, you know, as we just heard in, in, the, in the big session, you know, when you start coming up with all of those ideas to help you get to where you want to go, you will be amazed at what you can achieve. For me, Toastmasters 100% did that for me. Doesn't matter that I grew up as an actor. Doesn't matter that I spent you know 20 plus years at NBC. For me, it was in 2009 helping charter my very first Toastmasters club, and then doing it, putting it into action. Because again, as you've heard, we can all join clubs, but unless we participate and unless we take that action, nothing happens. Rosa Parks on living. Each person must live their life as a model for others. So that's where integrity, I think, really plays into it. And you can't fake integrity, you can't fake authenticity. It's really important. Um, Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I used that quote at a teacher appreciation at John F. Kennedy High School. I was, in, I was very honored to be invited to speak to about 130 teachers and staff and faculty at this high school to acknowledge them and recognize and thank them. And it was so important to me to help them understand how amazingly important their jobs as teachers are. And then, not just teachers, but it takes a village. You know, it's not just the teachers, it's the staff and the faculty, the administration, everyone supporting those teachers in helping kids every single day. Martin Luther King, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. And hope is where it's at. Hope is something that I hope every one of you feels inside, because without hope there's nothing. And that's what I think is so cool about being able to inspire. It's pulling that hope out and bringing it to the surface. Uh, the Dalai Lama on religion, my religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. I so identify with that. I really do. Uh, because I think that sometimes religion can separate, as does politics from time to time, which is why I generally don't discuss either of those things. I value them. I think there's a place for them. But to me, kindness, I'm known as the happiness guy, that's what it's about. One of my favorite mentors, Dennis Prager, says happy people make the world better. And that's one of the reasons that I got into that whole genre, because I truly believe that. Um, and Bill Gates on leaders. As we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. And this is another whole field of study that's coming up, is, is leadership through empowering. And you don't lead people by, you know, by pulling them along. That you you want it to be, you want it to be their idea to follow you, because you're setting an example as a good leader, and you're listening. And Steve Jobs, all of these people have done an amazing job changing the world. My favorite things in life uh, don't cost any money. It's really clear that the most precious resource we have is time. And how ironic that. You know, one of the richest men out there, who, by the way, was not known for being such a nice guy. He really wasn't. And so now what? You know, he was brilliant at what he did. But I think, it, again, it's just an example to us that we're here for such a short period of time, more even than dollars and cents necessarily is what's in here and how you treat other people. It would be interesting to know if he had to do it all over again, if he would have been a little different. And I actually thank Mark Zuckerberg in my acknowledgments in my book, Happiness Rocks, for developing Facebook. Because for me, Facebook was life changing. Facebook gave me the opportunity to connect with so many like-minded people. And I'll go down and find people that I have hundreds of friends in common with. And the common bind, the common tie there is positivity. And most of those people, are of a like mind. So all of these people had one thing in common, and that is that they understand that being good is different than being great. Because what I think is that sometimes good can be the enemy of great. 
good is what's in our comfort zone. And that's comfortable. We all love being in our comfort zone. However, that's not where the growth happens. The growth happens outside of our comfort zone. Everything you've ever wanted is one step outside of your comfort zone. Um, this all has to do with mindset. And so one definition that I got actually from a medical dictionary, a fixed mental attitude or disposition that predetermines a person's responses to and interpretations of situations. I went through nine years of misery at NBC. My first nine years there were miserable because of this guy that I was working with. He would not leave me alone unless I was complaining about something. And I was never a complainer. So I would take that 30 mile drive into Burbank from Agora thinking of things to complain about so that he'd leave me alone, <laughs> believe it or not. And that went on for nine years. Well, very long story short, he ended up trying to get me fired. And I knew I could never really trust him, so I started documenting every lie, every, I mean, all of it. It was, yeah, I could, believe me, I could write a movie just about that. And, you know, goodbye him. They, they ended up getting rid of him. But the mindset, I don't regret one second of any of that. Because to me, that's why I got into the happy, that's one of the reasons I got into the happiness thing in the first place. It was in an effort to him that I picked up my first book on the subject of happiness, Happiness is a Serious Problem by Dennis Prager, that got me so fascinated with it. And he wanted nothing to do with it because there are people out there who enjoy playing the victim. And they enjoy inflicting all that pain and, and you just want to stay as far away from them as possible. That's all you can do. It's all you can do, but mindset is everything. I started studying and now teaching the science of happiness. And what really fascinated me was that our brains are not wired to make us happy. Did anyone know that? Our brains are not wired to make us happy. Our brains are wired for our survival from ages ago, from really the beginning of time. It's that fight or flight, oh my god, I'm being chased by a tiger, I have to survive. That's how we're wired. Now that's not to say that we can't study the tools that go into creating a happy life, like gratitude and kindness and forgiveness and all of that, which I enjoy teaching so much. Uh, in fact, a uh, little plug here, so I'm doing a seminar on this, my first one with Roseanne McDonald, who I had hoped would be here. She actually just joined uh, and became a charter member of our newest Dustmasters Club, which I'm joining now as well was originally called Hypno Masters, and now they've, they're they retitling it because there are a bunch of coaches in it and you know, um, people like that also. It's not just hypnotherapists, but the two of us are teaming up to talk about living your life with happiness and inner peace. Because inner peace is the second piece of it. You know, happiness is when we're on the peaks, but life is not all Pollyanna. Has anyone been through any one or two adverse things in their lives? Any, any overcoming, you know, losses or tragedies? tragedy or anything like that. We all have. We all have our journey. And one of the things I try to help people with is when you meet someone, or if someone does something to criticize you or condemn you or anything like that, you never know what journey they've been on or where they're coming from. So just always, I always try to withhold judgment. But uh, I, I'll, I have an offer for you that I'm going to let you know about later. But the idea is to let you walk out of there being a person of yes, a person of possibility, a person who knows that you can make it happen. Not one of the millions out there who scream no, no, no. Because that's what the mindset is all about. You're either, we have up to 65,000 thoughts every day. And all of them are either positively or negatively charged. And sadly, up to 65, or excuse me, up to 85% of them are negatively charged. But it's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's, as humans, it's not our fault because again, A, that's the way we were wired, and B, we are bombarded with this negativity from media. And that's part of the fun of my life right now is my alter ego here is a beautiful heart on my iPhone, then that's how I wake up. But every time you wake up, it is another opportunity to change the world. And, and it all starts with you. Lance?
Yeah, since you had a Mark Twain quote up there, I'll, I'll give you one of my favorites to, to talk about, and that is a lot of terrible things have happened to me in my life, some of which actually happened. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Great point. Great point. We all, we all are the stories that we tell. And it, 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 it takes me to the game telephone. You know, when you tell one person something and then you tell her and she tells him and, she, and it keeps going. And by the time it gets back to the person who originated that sentence or story or even word, it's completely different. And when we live through something, it's the stories we tell that ingrain and embed it in our brains forever. When I lost my friend, and then my mom and my dad, I mean, I could go on and on. I've lost so many people in my life, yet it's how I recount the stories and what I choose to remember that helps me stay so positively focused because I feel like they're with me every day. I really do. I, you know, my friend Michael's here, my mom's here, I'm good. I really am. My mom and I used to have this discussion of what happens? What happens when we're gone? And it was very interesting, as positive a person as my mom was, she thought, that, that's it, it's over. And I thought, to me, that just didn't make sense because if energy is neither created nor destroyed, it's got to go somewhere. And I truly believe that. And that goes back to Jim Rohn's quote of, you know, your life and success in life is based on your philosophy. So there are things that you can do in life to build a philosophy that will serve you forever. And when you then share that philosophy, that's how you start changing the world, one person at a time. Um, we're still good. OK, I mean, yes? Yeah, I noticed there was no quote person, no quote person for knowledge of black power. That's such a good concept. Knowledge uh, plus knowledge plus action, yeah. or, or applied knowledge, yes. Right, that's so valid, and I'm wondering who, uh, there must be someone who, who could quote this famous, or it might be you, who could up a, the quote that states exactly the truth at that time. You know what, on my next presentation, and we, we all heard if you were in the big, in the, in the big uh, session after lunch, um, she was talking about how she records every, every presentation and thinks to herself, what can I do better next time? So I thank you because I can guarantee you that in my next presentation, my name will be on that quote. <laughs> uh, good. And then my last one. Yeah. Uh, what knowledge could you apply to that fellow who drove you nuts for nine years with regard to you know, the assumption is you only went to 210 or 211 degrees and needed to go to 212 to do something, create something, and act and solve the problem? Right. In your next seminar, we well, there's a, there is a definitely a long story that goes along with that, but I'll tell you kind of the Reader's Digest was that truly there is not a doubt in my mind that I was at 213 or 214 degrees for those nine years because people would come up to me and ask me daily how in the world I managed to work with them and how I stayed, you know, without leaving, without running away, without letting them really affect me. And my answer was, I, I just, I was in the best job I had ever had. I was, you know, making a good living. I, I was starting a family. And there was no way that I was going to let this maniac, for lack of a better word, I mean, pathological liar, you know, sociopath, I mean, you name it, bipolar, all of it. Um, he pulled something on me so early on in my career that I knew I could never fully trust him. And so when I saw what he was starting to do, I just started emailing myself home every day. I documented every single thing, every lie that came out of his mouth. Not, not harboring any anger, just, uh, oh, that's interesting. Today, he told the head of security that we need an extra parking spot for the cast of Friends who comes to view the show every week. I felt like, well, what planet is he on? I mean, he was just coming up with the craziest stuff. It was all of that. He was indicted by his own, by the Department of Labor for embezzling $22,000 from his own union, and he was not fired because he had them so convinced that they couldn't function without him. And so, again, all these years later, he gets it in his head that he wants me gone. He just, for whatever reason, somebody's a threat, whatever it was. 
he, he said, you know, he, so he started lying, saying I wasn't helping or whatever. So I questioned them and found out they were planning on firing me without even speaking to me. What? That's kind of an extreme example, but but if there is if there are negative people or problem people in your life, one way to look at them is what can I learn from these people? Yes. I was told a long time ago when I was sit, had to go through ten years of sitting through conferences and workshops that weren't working for me. Uh, somebody said, "Well, why don't you make a list of the things you could do better than the speaker, and you'll grow every time you see a bad speaker, or you'll grow every time you're with a boring person, or you'll grow every time somebody does something bad or makes a mistake." You learn from it. Oh, for and sure. Use that as an opportunity. Right. And so, thank you for that. Once again, we, we have to team up. No, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> so, to that point, because the story goes on, P.S. again, he, he's gone and I'm still there 24 years later, by the way. Uh, but to your point, to Lance's point, that's where I learned about forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness. Because when you harbor anger or resentment or anything like that, all it can do is lead to illness, I believe, and disease, and it's learning how to let go. And had it not been for that negative experience for all those years, I truly don't believe I'd be standing here right now. I really think it was in an effort to help him that got me to this place. So I don't I don't harbor one ill will feeling toward him for that. Yes? One thing I personally learned is that when you discover when people start treating you a certain way or bring negativity in your life, mm -hmm. I think it's a blessing because then you know who your enemy is. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And then you can change food and stay away from them. Right, absolutely. There, there's another quote that says, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And that, it was almost it was almost living in that situation. But right. yes, thank you. Yes. So one of the things that I learned is that forgiveness is a practice that you have to practice every day. It's like breathing in, breathing out. You, right. When you breathe out, you let it go. That's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, in order to change the world, we need to be able to be with all that is. And if the things that bother us the most give us the opportunity to be able to be with them first, then maybe we can do something. So in that sense, they are that opportunity. Right. And, and Ricky, um, I, I have found, I've been in situations similar like yours, and I realized that it was because the other person lacked what they what they knew I had, but they didn't have, you know, I'm sure. because I had a, a better outlook on life and right. this and that, and so they would throw daggers right. and say things, I'm like, wow. And, and you know, I just, I, I actually had pity on them and I prayed for them and I said, God, please help that person to discover their inner self in a good way right. so that they can live a better life. Right. But it's always, because when someone's pointing the finger, there are three fingers pointing back at them because it's what it's three times the amount of what they don't, right. you know, you know something. Yeah, no, and thank you for that. And that, that's part of what made it really tough, too, is that we didn't have this real adversarial relationship. I mean, he treated me like a member of his family. I went to his kids' bar and bought mitzvahs. I, you know, wrote them checks. And he was a card-carrying member of the Magic Castle, took my mom and I there. I mean, he made me feel like I was such a friend, but at the same time, you know, he was he was acting totally in conflict with that. And I think that's the, that's the part that really hurt, was just the you know, that bet feeling betrayed, you know. But again, it was just like, you know, to your point, Roseanne, of just, you know, letting it go and, and, and it, almost having pity for that person, you know. Uh, and again, in an effort to try and help him, that's what drove me to the whole happiness genre, you know, was really to try and help him. Yes? Yeah, you mentioned to get to the magic, just going outside, one step outside your comfort Right. Would you suggest that maybe do one thing a day, maybe you do watch a new day, see so you read a book or something? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. And and uh, and I love that I love that you just suggested once a day. I think that's awesome. You know, I mean, there are people. Uh, you know, there are people who would have maybe suggested once a week, once a month, <laughs> really bad ones, maybe once a year. Right? <laughs> Daily, I think that I think that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. So for 
people that are not attending here yes. you know a certain individual that you know is basically unhappy with their life. Right. Other than leading by example mm -hmm. and trying to befriend them or saying, you know, taking them aside, you know, what's wrong, what right. can I do to help them? Right. What other suggestions that could you recommend for me to take towards that other person? Well, and I know I know many of them myself, by the way. I may I may live with one or two, right. and uh, and so it's what's sometimes challenging is that you cannot make anyone else happy, right? And so I know and, and that all I can do is offer what I can to them, and then it is completely up to them to accept it or not. And and just because just because. Uh, they choose not to today does not mean that they may not choose to tomorrow. And I have actually seen that happen, and I have seen some of these people progress and definitely, you know, get better. So please, uh, if, if you need anyone, feel free to write me at ricky, R-I-C-K-Y, at lifelonghappiness.com, and I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. I know we're out of time. I kind of just tell usually people one of my times, you know what, don't be dependent upon other people to be Absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what right. Yeah. And don't, not only that, but you know, don't allow other people to make you feel lousy about yourself. Right. right. You, it takes your permission to let them do that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sometimes easier said than done. But yeah, that's definitely the message right. for sure. So uh, thank you all. Uh, I will be at the expo. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Yeah. And anyone who's interested, if you can, register today for this life-changing August 16th event. I'm offering a free book for anyone who registers today of Happiness Rocks. And uh, otherwise, I do have copies available also at the expo. And just thank you so much for being here. Um, um, reinventing the wheel doesn't work. Reinventing yourself does. And you know who said that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.